Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today I am working with Hanson Yachts, based in the Lambs Yacht Centre in Jacksonville, Florida. And they've kindly let me check out one of their listings, and it's a boat which I'd imagine most of you have never heard of, let alone seen. It's a 1999 Siri 330, and you're expecting the next word to be Sundancer, but it's not. It's a Siri 330 Express Amberjack. Now the front half to two thirds is basically the same as the Series Sundancer, it's the aft cockpit that's different. This is far more utilitarian and it was targeted against both the fishing and the diving communities. Now this offers the best of both worlds because you've still got the same accommodation, you've still got the same hull design and it allows you to either cruise offshore or just enjoy a weekend on the water. And depending on where you're cruising, I like the fact that this one's got a low air draft so you don't need to worry about all those bridge opening and closing. She also benefits from a solid hard top, so that way you get plenty of protection from the Florida sun. And she's got a mixture of canopy covers and also those wraparound windows. So that way you can remove the canopy if you want, or you can open it in sections, or you can keep it fully enclosed. And at the time of shooting this video, she was up for sale for $84,000. And she's had a lot of time, money and effort invested in her. She's got two new engines, they've only got 54 hours on the clock. She's had the generator replaced in 2021 and she's also had all the electronics recently upgraded. So all the framework we have in place for supporting that hardtop also doubles up as great handholds for making your way to the bow. Plenty of space on the bow if you want to lay out here. But you also have easy access for when it comes to accessing the windlass or for your bow docking lines. On the bow itself you'll see we've got the electric windlass that was recently replaced. This can be operated both here and at the helm. You've also got the remote searchlight. And the anchor locker is deep enough you could store your bow lines up here, maybe even a fender or two. And this one measures in approximately 33 feet in length and she's got a beam of just under 13 and a half feet. But she feels very solid and stable. When I'm walking around the boat, the boat's not moving with me. And as I make my way aft towards the cockpit again, you'll notice there's plenty of rod holders and there's even outriggers on the roof. This one's definitely more fishing oriented than any other series I've been on before. And once you get to the aft cockpit, you'll see this is basically stripped out compared to what you would normally expect from a series of this size. But there's plenty of deck space here that if you do want to do fishing, if you do want to do diving, it's far more accessible, especially for a boat of this size. We also have lights built into that hard top, and that way you can use this for night fishing and night diving too. And you'll notice there's plenty of rod holders throughout this half cockpit. We've also got a seating area that runs against the transom. I like the fact that you can have it fold out, so you've got the bench seating, but you can also have it collapse, and then that way you've got more deck space. We've got easy access through that transom to get larger catch on board, or if you want to use this for diving. Deck wash in either quarter. We've also got the shower out here, and those access hatches on the deck, those are insulated fish boxes, but they can also be used for storage. Then as we make our way inside, this is when you start to find your standard sea ray. You get very comfortable seating, you'll probably get four or five adults out here in comfort. There's good headroom under that hard top. you got different storage options on the starboard side, but this would make a great bait station. Notice also the speakers that's built into the fiberglass because this one's got a very impressive sound system throughout. And underneath this section you can see this one's currently got a trash can, but you could also fit other items in here as well, including carrying a cooler if you wanted to. But underneath that helm seat we do also have an outdoor fridge, that way you keep your drinks and refreshments close at hand. The hatch that you see on the deck, this leads into the engine compartment, but there's an easier way to access the engines which I'll show you at the end of the video. And both the forward facing seats, I like the fact they've got the bolster effect. It's ideal if you want to sit down or stand up, you have something to lean on at all times. And there's a great deal of handholds throughout this cockpit, which is ideal, especially if you're going to be going offshore. And then to starboard is where you're going to find the helm position. And this has seen a lot of improvements and upgrades since it was first launched back in 99. You got your upgraded VHF radio. We now have new electronic throttles. These were installed when the engines were replaced. We've got triple Raymarine multifunction displays. This includes chart plotter, sounder, radar, but this is also connected up to all the engine instrumentation. I love how detailed all the rocker tabs are. 
easy to work out what to switch on and switch off. And then on top of all of this, we've got the classic full engine instrumentation. And for a boat of this size, she's got unobstructed views when it comes to doing your close quarter manoeuvring. But you also have great visibility over the aft deck. That way you're always in close communication for those that are out there fishing. And then as for the lower accommodation, it's just a few short steps down. And there was more headroom down here than I was expecting when I first stepped on board. So to starboard we've got this bench seating in the saloon, but this converts to a double berth. There's also far more storage lockers and cabinets than I was expecting. And notice they've all got that push button effect, so that, that way the doors stay locked and secure for when the boat's underway. Moving to the bow, this area converts into being a double berth. That canopy that you see, that extends over the aft cockpit, so you can have that fully enclosed to protect it from all the elements. You can also enclose this, you can slide those doors across if you want extra privacy. That sea ray bag's got all sorts of documentations and history that goes with the boat. And into both port and starboard, they've got a clever design with these mirrors, you almost don't realise that there's storage behind them. Plenty of storage to help make this the perfect weekend getaway. There's even storage underneath the cushions. And with the cockpit table in place, this is also a good seat in the area for preparing meals. You can easily get several adults sitting around here. And speaking of meals, this one's got a well-equipped galley for a boat of its size. There's plenty of storage options here. There's a convection microwave oven. You see here we've got a TV that's mounted in here. But these storage cabinets are actually a lot deeper than you would expect. We've got good countertop space, we've got a two burner electric stove top. You've got another fridge underneath, and again there's handholds even in here. Feels like it would be a family friendly boat to be on. And then under this countertop we've got the sink. And this boat's equipped with 50 gallon freshwater tank capacity. It's also got 28 gallon holding tank and 275 gallons of fuel. And that fridge underneath in the galley, that's also got an ice box in there. And then it wouldn't be a weekend getaway if it wasn't for a heads compartment as well. And then here you're going to find the heads, but it's also got a shower. And that shower is basically the faucet that you see at the sink that extends out. And then there's a bracket up overhead that you can mount that on. And we do have opening portholes for light and ventilation. And the toilet itself has a vacuum flush system to it. And they just make great use of having relatively small space available. I also like that in the lower accommodation there's so many lights in this boat but that also includes courtesy lights as I leave the head compartment and head out you'll see that there's more of those available on the steps too. And then I mentioned there's multiple ways to access the engines. You do have the small hatch on the deck but the entire cockpit raises up on hydraulics. And once this is fully expanded out You'll find in here a pair of Mercruiser 6.2 litre engines. These are 350 horsepower each and there's only 54 hours on the clock. We also have a Westerbeek 5 kilowatt generator and it's only got around 400 hours on the clock. This will return speeds in excess of 30 knots and you'll be able to cruise in the mid to high 20s. All the big ticket and expensive items on the boat, they've all been replaced, upgraded or refurbished. I think this boat offers tremendous value for money and brings with it far more modern reliability. But as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below, if you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. I'd like to thank Mike for the opportunity to come on board and share this one with you. And as always, I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.